hey guys how do you do welcome to your program users now for today we're going to talk about how to filter in c sharp okay our language of choice is going to be c sharp we're going to see how we can filter data from a list view of course bound to an array list of objects now we're going to be working with player objects this data right here each particular row is going to represent a single player for us we're going to see how we can filter this one using a text box now the user types then we filter our data so this is what i'm talking about you can see right here we're filtering uh, very nicely so we can filter whatever we want now we're filtering using the first column but then after this tutorial you shall be able to filter with any column of your choice okay so this is it guys this is what we're going to do we're going to see how to filter our data of course our data bound to our list view so join me we start off we have to create our project c sharp okay so create our c sharp project once you've done that one then come over right here to our designer now this is my de our designer over right here go to our toolbox drag whatever components uh that we're going to need now we will need two components of course first a simple text box and then of course a list view that's it right click your text box so what we're going to be doing is very simple by filtering actually we shall be filtering as the user types now for us to be able to do that one we have to handle the text change event for our text box so right click it then move to properties then come over right here and then double click this one right here text change this is going to generate for us at the filter text change event right here and that's what we're going to override so of course if you double click it this is the method is going to generate for us a filter txt text change so this is what shall be overriding okay but then before we proceed to that one let's come over right here remember we said that we shall be filtering a list of objects now we have to define the class for these particular objects so let's come right here i'm calling it a player okay this is going to be a player it's going to represent a single player now once you've done that one then you're going to assign it properties a single player is going to have a name position and then of course the team so these are class a class is actually a template for objects okay so yes we these are the uh, instance variables for this particular class now for this particular uh, to set value to these particular variables we will need to pass those uh, values via the constructor right here so yes if it's actually this class you pass us the name the position and then of course the team then of course you assign them to our local instance variables what about if you need a uh, data for these particular uh, variables well we're going to expose those particular data for our properties okay so these properties we're making them public so any class can access them now if you call for instance the name we simply return for you the name okay which is our local variable over here position we return the position and that's it that's how we shall be exposing the data now yes this is our player a single player object we shall of course represent a single row from one class the first thing that we're going to do uh, let's go ahead and then i just declare some variables over right here first of all we're going to have a data table we're going to have a data view then you're also going to have a list okay of a generic type player we're going to call it players now for a data table what's its purpose well it's the data table that shall be binding of course that shall be reading a uh, data actually data table is uh, going to help us in actually filtering okay it's actually what we shall be passing to an instance of our data view now of course to filter our data we're going to be using a data view okay now we do that one then of course a list right here this is the list of data that shall, we shall be needing to filter is going to a list of players objects now once we have we've declared those ones then let's move over to our constructor first of course we're going to set the properties for a list view its view property and then of course its auto resize right here now once you've done that one then of course uh, let's come over right here then we make sure that we add the columns to our list view so we're going to have three columns name position and then of course team each of them we're going to be giving them a width of 150 then of course we're going to go ahead instantiate our data table or then of course add these particular columns name position and then of course the team to our data table now the next thing after that one let's come over right here we're going to create a method that we're going to call generate data this method is going to return for us a list of players so it's going to generate the data and then of course return for the to us as a list so yes we do that one now of course first we have to 
in Sashieto players equal to new list right here and then of course using the collection initializer we're going to pass in our player objects now we simply come call new player then we pass in the name name position and then of course the team okay take note we are separating our player objects with comma so that's it this at the end of the day we make sure that we return the players list so so far so good now that's going to give us a list of players but then remember we said for us to filter we shall be using a data view and then for us to with our data view we need to pass it a data table so what we're going to do our uh, because we have this particular list we're going to read data from this list and then of course add those particular data to our data table so to do that one let's create a simple method that we're calling fill data you see the method is just taking in a list of player objects then of course once we've taken we're going to loop through those particular players and then of course add their properties to our rows over right here now dt.rows.add now the add method right here expects us to pass in a param so we pass in as many columns as you like okay so for us in this case we have three columns player.name player.position and then of course player.team does it this is going to fill our data table now next let's come over right here to our filter txt change event so this is actually where we're going to be performing our filtering now the first thing that we want to make sure that we do let's go ahead clear our items from our list view okay to make sure that it's empty then once we've done that one then we're going to have a for each loop where we're going to be iterating through the rows of our data table now take note data row row in dv to table we're converting first we're casting our data view to a data table then of course we get its rows collection then of course what we're going to do we simply come list view dot items dot add then we come over it yeah new list view item then of course we're going to pass now new string this right here string array then row remember right here row we pass in we get the first item okay then dot to string then of course now these ones right here we're simply passing of course the columns now these are the column indices for instance this is a row param okay so we come pass in for instance the instance which is zero then to represent the first column second column third column now they are row objects so we are making sure that we cast them of course to string okay let's do something i have uh, noticed we've done some mistake over right here no this is not something that we do in our filter text change event over right here let's come create a simple method over here that we're calling populate list view what we're doing here this is just simply populating a list view so let's come over right here so this is it we shall be populating a list view okay uh, right here it get past a data view then we populate the list view with our items now for our filtering right here we're going to use our data view to filter and doing that one is rather simple let's come over right here dv dot row filter okay row filter property then string dot format now name like that you're using to filter dot text does it so we get the text that the user has typed and then of course we pass it over right there then of course once we've done that one is when we simply come right here and then call this our method our populate so let's come populate it over right after filtering of course we need to pass in a data view so we go ahead and then pass in our data view well this is going to take place as the user is typing data into a text box what of uh, if we first run our project of course we'd like to first of course populate our list view so that the user can see what is filtering now to do that one let's simply come and make sure we add this one first we need to call the field data table then pass in our list of players now this is going to read data from our list and then fill our data table we instantiate our data view take note we're passing a data table to our data view that's why we were of course filling it uh that's why we were filling our data table in the first place then of course we call populate list view to fill to populate our list view let's run the project and see uh, what we have now of course we are here so we come i start typing you can see everything getting filtered perfectly okay i said we are filtering using the first column but then inside your data view inside your our uh you can just pass if you want to filter whatever table that you want to whatever column that you want to filter you can just you can see we are able to filter any 
set of data course using our first column that's it i'm hoping you guys have enjoyed the tutorial if you have please leave us a like hit the subscribe button so that you don't miss our c-sharp tutorials also the source code for this particular tutorial we're going to attach it to our website campusha.com so make sure that you visit it also and also browse other c-sharp source codes that's it take care i'll catch you in the next tutorial